pull you into that trap. Okay? <clears throat> PKAs, we have half protons on, half protons off. I can't tell the charge right here. I can tell what half of the molecules are and half of the molecules are, but I can't tell what the overall charge is. However, I get out here where I'm more than one pH unit above the pKa, what happens to that proton mix here? I've pulled the proton off. Which proton have I pulled off? The carboxyl, because that's the first one that's coming off. The amine one is still on. Why is the amine proton still on? The pH is more than one pH unit below its pKa, which is way up here in the nines. Now we get up here in the nines, and we have the charge at pKa2, which is equal to? We don't know. Half on, half off again, right? Only after we go a, unit, a pH unit above that do we get the proton fully off, and the charge at that point is? Minus one. Okay, guessing will get you in trouble. Always calculate before you do anything else. Calculate. Always apply the rule and calculate. You'll always be in good shape with that. That makes sense? Let's see. I said we'd finish. Let me just see if there's any other quick thing I want to say. Any questions on this before I go forward? Yeah. Here? And go over what? Okay. Is the proton on or off at that point? That was the question I asked. Right? And the answer is that half the molecules have this charge up here. Half the molecules have this charge up here because this amine proton is half on, half off. I can't tell what the charge is at that point. Just like I couldn't tell what the charge was at this point because half the carboxyls had the proton on and half the pro carboxyls had the proton off. Make sense? Only when I get more than one pH unit above this pKa can I say it's reasonable to assume that proton is off. Yes? I'll give you the pKa that you need. So I might say, let's assume that all the R group pKa's are 12 for amines. And all the R group pKa's for carboxyls are 2. It makes it simple. That way you don't say, oh my god, is it lysine or is it arginine or tryptophan? Or, oh my goodness, which one has what, what? It makes it very simple. Okay? So take a look at my practice exams. Practice exams there are good. I always advise students, don't study practice exams. Look at practice exams to see the kinds of questions that I'm asking, and you're better off. Okay? Please don't use practice exams as a study guide. It's a big mistake. Students waste way too much time using them as study guides and not enough time just getting an idea for the kinds and types of questions that, that people ask. I like to tell the story that I, I helped write a textbook a few years ago, and one of my jobs was making up problems for a CD-ROM that went with the textbook. In the span of one month, I wrote over 6,000 questions. Yeah. Now, I tell you that not to impress you, because that's not my point. My point is I know how to make up a lot of questions. So if you think you're going to learn things in the class by studying the exams, you're going to probably have a little surprise. So it's much better that you learn the concepts than it is that you learn the questions. Does that make sense? So, okay. Now I've really got you scared, right? Okay. You guys have a good weekend, and I shall see you Monday afternoon.